Organised by businessman and cultural critic Sir David Tang, the open forum How Can We Make a Success of It welcome questions from the public on how the city can best go about building and managing the $22 billion West Carlin Cultural District project. Held at the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts yesterday, a panel of experts have been summoned by Sir David from the UK, the US and Australia. After the Mendelssohn recital concluded, debate focused on how Hong Kong could fill the extra 28,000 seats, who should head the project, the role of civil servants, and also the scope of international influence. In this West Carlin District project, we have a golden opportunity of providing uh, these artistic and cultural experiences that will no doubt in my mind make Hong Kong a better place for every one of our seven million residents and for the tens of millions of visitors who come every year. Today we are very, very lucky because um, we have gathered eight people who I calculate have a combined experience of over two centuries um, <laughs> immersed in the business of uh, creating, operating, sustaining and expanding cultural institutions. On the panel was Sir David Gillamson, Executive and Artistic Director of Carnegie Hall, Thomas Krenz, Director of Guggenheim Museums, Sir Nicholas Sirota, Director of Britain's Tate Art Galleries, Mark Jones, Director of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, Charles Samaras-Smith, Chief Executive of the Royal Academy of Arts, Michael Lynch, Director of the South Bank Centre in London, Julia Payton Jones, director of the Serpentine Gallery, also in London, and Tim McFarlane, managing director of the really useful company Asia Pacific. I think it's very important to build on the very considerable strengths of the, um, the design and art community in Hong Kong and more widely in the Pearl River Delta, because I don't think a cultural district will work unless it has strong links. Uh, in the community which support it. But I think that for it to work as well, it must have strong links uh, internationally, because none of us can exist in a purely local or national community. However remarkable the building is, at the end of the day, in 10 or 20 years' time, what really matters is going to be the program. What I mean is that the world has changed dramatically in the last 20, 25 years and that there is no museum which is speaking for Asia as a counterpart to those great museums in Europe and America which rest on achievements of the past. Thank you, Nick. And now, Michael Lynch. Uh, thank you, David. It's fantastic to see the progress that has taken place um, since I was here last October in, in putting together the mechanisms and the, the power structures to move forward. But I also recognise that you know, there will be some implicit tensions um, between you know, the planning, um, the public engagement exercises, the role that the arts community wants to play in the, those future planning issues, and then the imperative to actually start something. And I guess the one message that you know, I think I can bring from now, having delivered the South Bank Centre project over the last few years, is that there is a point where you need to start the public engagement. There is also a point where you need to finish the public engagement. And there's a point where you actually have to you know, reach some agreement within you know, all of the key parties about what it is you want for West Kowloon. Um, it is an extraordinary project. As everybody said, I think it's probably unique in the world to have the opportunity to create something from the start in this way, but also to have people backing it with such a, a massive vision of what the potential is. Every project is different. Um, every cultural center is different. But the point is, it has to be rooted in your own community and your own culture. Um, whatever we have done is relevant and has to be relevant to where we come from. What you do has to be rooted here. And I think the one thing perhaps that we can help on, I've always felt in life that in fact, questions are far more important than answers. If one can ask the right questions, there's a very good chance of coming up with the right answers. Most people don't get round to asking the right questions. And you have the opportunity to do something infinitely greater than I think anybody's done anywhere. Thank you. 
Julia Peyton Jones. Thank you. And the interesting thing about this time that we live in is that art is for all, and also everyone sees it and embraces it as something that is for them, something that's not marginalized, something that really is for everybody. Uh, at the risk of, uh, of uh, proffering advice, um, the, the scale uh, of this project uh, does concern me slightly. Um, uh, what is planned is, is a total facility of nearly 28,000 seats. Um, uh, I mean, I draw a comparison to the, to the Sydney Opera House, which has about 4,500 seats, and I wonder whether uh, too much has been planned initially. Uh, because it's, it's beyond just the bricks and mortar, it's actually what happens in the theatres, and I'm talking primarily about the theatres, uh, that will determine whether or not they are a success. So where is the programming going to come from, and importantly, where is the audience going to come from to fill such a huge complex? Tom Kranz. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, I guess one of the disadvantages of being uh, sixth or seventh in line with such a distinguished group is that most of the good ideas are out on the table. Um, it's important to think about what you want this to be in terms of its identity, because yes, this is an opportunity, but it's also going to be seen and perceived as a, as a face of, uh, of Hong Kong going into the future. And Hong Kong occupies a, a, a very special place, you might say between East and West, or certainly between China and the West. So how this is done, architecturally, technologically, in terms of content, how it positions its identity between global and local, is going to be extremely important. Um, and in fact, I think it's going to uh, uh, be a major part of how Hong Kong is perceived throughout the world, probably for the 21st century. David said we shouldn't talk about issues of governance, but I think governance does lie at the heart of how the cultural center will operate. And you will see there's a consistent theme to what I'm saying. At the moment, it's all governed by a single board. I think at some point, there will have to be an element of devolution so that the different elements within the site, the museum, the exhibition center, the performing arts spaces, theaters, and concerts have their own system of management so that it's not simply managed all centrally by a single organization, but there is a degree of devolved responsibility and accountability. For the South China Morning Post, this is James Moore.